Demon Souls walkthrough for ArmageddonGaming.com. Here we are with the infamous Flame Lurker. Uh, and here we are. And so many deaths here. You will have so many deaths as well. But I'm here to tell you a good melee strategy. Now, it uses one of the infamous... Um, maybe not the one, but one of the many exploits that are available in this room. I'm using a Thief's Ring. And Flame Lurker with the Thief's Rings on is kind of a dipshit. And uh, you'll notice very quickly in this fight that he's pretty fast. Well, he's not pretty fast, he's very fast. And he has almost no inertia in that he can go from stop to full speed in a fraction of a second, which sucks. And he has very little pattern. Uh, towards the end he does like to start spamming abilities, so you can bet on that. And he does have a tendency to back up and sort of run away, giving you enough time to grass, but uh... So the exploit we are using today is the spine bone right here. That uh, you can kind of kite him around it. It's almost not even an exploit. Um, I'm saying that, but many of you are going to disagree, but if you want to do this melee, and uh, this is your first time through, and you're not a professional, and I definitely not, I'm not particularly good at this game, I think this way is just fine. It takes a while. Uh, it's not a sure bet. I mean, no glitch in this room is a sure bet. When I did this first off, I had a royal on my very first character. And I got him glitched in a wall and I was able to just hit him with soul arrow until he's dead. You can probably do that. Uh, again, not guaranteed, but um, we're not going to go that far. Magic spamming is uh, on bosses. Yeah, what's the point? It's no fun, unless you're speed running. So I do kind of like this ability. I found it to be pretty consistent. It did take me two tries though, because I kind of messed up. But uh, a few ground rules. Uh, these pillars that are up don't help you. Don't hide behind it and think that he won't be able to hit you through them, because he will. Even uh, that the spinal cord, or the spinal bone thing right there, that he shoots that fire, that fire attack through, that'll hit me as well. There's it, there's very little protection in this uh, this room. There's one rib cage, I think off to the right, that you can hide in and it's it's harder for him to get through. Ew. But uh, there really is no safe spot besides. If you kind of run away, he'll do this and he'll get stuck. I think that only happens if you have Thief's Ring on. But, uh, it's gonna be a lot of rinse and repeat, pretty much. And as you can see, I've been, uh, basically trying to get him stuck like this. Come in, put in an attack, and then get out. As you can see, he can get behind there. He can get you pretty much at any point. He can hit you with that. He can hit you with that. He can hit you with everything. So you need to be on your toes all the time. Uh, this is a very demanding fight. Uh, but... If you're good at this game, there's definitely a... You can definitely take him out normally. I found it tricky because, uh... That fire attack he does, that sort of has an AoE, uh... Area of effect splash damage to it. It's weird. And I found, uh... If you are gonna take him head-on, I think it's... It's closer to back up from him, parallel, than try to roll to the right or the left. I feel like that, uh the attack will sweep more to the left and right than it will forward and back. Maybe just me. Uh, this, this fight's gonna take a lot of practice. To be honest, if, if you haven't had too much trouble with this game until now, well, this, this is really gonna change your mind. This is one of the hardest encounters in the entire game. Arguably. Arguably one of the most, but... Uh, I, think, I think there are harder things. But... This way is is going to be fairly consistent. I was able to get two consistent runs at it, even though I died the first time. And it seemed to work fairly well. It does, as I said, it does take a while. You can hit him through the those bones as well sometimes if you get lucky. That's probably what makes this fight the hardest, is that there are a lot of variables. And it's very difficult to foresee what he does a lot of the times. A lot of other bosses are very regimented. Uh, they've... Uh, Kind of drawn out animations or uh, they do things in orders. This guy is kind of like fuck all that. 
Uh, as you can see, there are a few times I go in right after he's done an attack. Oh, I almost died right there. That was bad. That happens more toward the end. Yeah, there are a few times I go in right after he's done an attack, thinking I can lay on another one because he has some kind of recursive time before he can launch another attack. That's not true. He's He has a tendency to spam uh, his attacks toward the end. He does two right in a row at time. Once he gets toward the end of his health bar, he starts becoming a crybaby. Um, it's almost like fighting another player in PvP, to be honest. And, uh, almost, because I, there is a time where that'll happen. We will get to that. But, um, where he is now is probably one of the best spots, because it makes him pretty easy to hit. And to doing the overhead two-handed weapon, or two-handed sword attack, is very, it's very accurate blow. And it's also a strong attack, so it's going to do the most damage. And I have a crushing claim or plus two right now, I think. Plus one. Plus two, I think. And it's really not even doing that much damage. I've seen a lot of people do this with the Crescent Fal Falcon. Falchion. Plus one, which you can get from four one. Uh, that's a possibility. I personally prefer two-handed weapons in general. Uh, you probably want more health than I do. If you're going to fight him one-on-one -on -one in the open of the room. I don't have very much health since I'm sort of stacking strength. Just because I like that build. And towards the end here, I get really close to dying. It's not good. But I hope the strategy is at least a little bit helpful. If you don't want to totally... Yeah, it was almost my end right there. That was that was bad. I was not, not feeling hot. But if you want to do this at least semi-legitimately, I suggest this strategy. Uh, I think it's... Just a little bit fair because I think he's a little unfair sometimes. And this just evens the playing field, in my opinion. If you don't want to do this, then uh, go ahead and try him out in the open. I've seen it done plenty of times, it's not too difficult. Maybe for certain people. It's difficult for me because I'm not so good at this game, but for your first play through the game, I suggest you know doing whatever you're, you feel comfortable with. Uh, at least you get options for this guy. Uh, another very difficult boss fight that's in... Uh, World 3, you don't get quite as many options. So, we will see. For then. So that's pretty much the end of this boss fight. I almost die again. This is bad. Kind of embarrassing toward the end. Alright, that's basically it for this boss fight. Thank you for watching. Coming back next video, and we will do the Dragon God, which is sort of a staple of this game. Very interesting boss fight, so you don't want to miss that. So make sure to come back and we will kill the dragon god.